What's going on, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. And I'm Andrew. And today we've got a bunch of gadgets this week. We have some smartphone news, which we haven't had in a little bit. A little bit of that. A little I know bit everyone of... loves all the EV news and are like, more EV, more EV all the time. But Just me? No. Just me? Just you. There is some a little at the but end. But no, we do have a good amount to yeah. talk about, plus some laptops and stuff. I kind of want to start with the laptop stuff, actually. Let's do it. That's a, a good place to dive in. So was it two weeks ago we had WWDC, mm-hmm. which was uh, Apple's event where we got lots of new software updates, but also had a little bit of hardware. Two new laptops with the M2 chip. The MacBook Air M2, which is going to show up around July, I guess maybe August by the time it actually comes out. Mm-hmm. Probably July. Um, And then the M2 MacBook Pro, which is a refresh of the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro, uh, very much the exact same laptop, just with a new chip. Yes. That one, very easy to make, so it's coming out first. So now the reviews are out, and uh, a couple people have have posted about it, benchmarked it, figured out what it's really capable of. And it didn't really surprise us at all, which to me, as I'm watching the reviews, I'm trying to figure out, okay— I don't have one here, so I didn't get to review it, but yeah. I'm watching the reviews. So I'm like, who is this laptop for? It's a conversation we've been having at the studio a lot in the last couple of weeks of just like, we can't quite nail down exactly it's, who would buy this. It is an incredibly slim sliver of, of a target demographic that should actually buy the M2 MacBook Pro. Okay, so here's here's how I would how I'm seeing it defined. Okay. Right? And it's really hard because I don't actually agree with most of these. A lot of people are saying, oh, you want to get a pro laptop, but you don't want to break the bank. So it's well, the cheapest pro. Let's go. Let's like put it into context first on why it's hard to to pick or sure. to, to like put someone in that category. Because right now you have the MacBook Air M2 just got announced. So if you really want M2, there's a the MacBook Air, which is cheaper, has the updated design, you know, notch, smaller bezels, the just the whole new redesign of everything, right? It's and a then, better laptop. Exactly. And then, well, the only difference is like there's active cooling in the 13-inch MacBook Pro for M2. The 13-inch MacBook Pro M2's only advantages over the 13-inch MacBook Air M2 are active cooling, a slightly larger battery, and if you really want a touch bar, you can get it. If you want it. That is it. Everything yeah. else about it is it's a, it's a slightly smaller screen with slightly worse brightness. It's a slightly thicker bezels. It's a less ports. It's an older design. Everything about it is is lesser, but but it is the two advantages there. M two, but we also are seeing previously we have the M one Pro and M one Max versions of the fourteen inch and the sixteen inch Pro, uh, the big MacBook dogs. Pros. Yeah, the big dogs. Some of the best, most well reviewed laptops I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously more expensive, but in those laptops you are getting a much more capable chip. Yep with uh, much better performance, but also much better screens. Yeah, it's the new design. It's the new design again. Uh, Real ports, an SD card slot, full-size HDMI, all this stuff, um, MagSafe. And so the the M2 MacBook Pro lives right in between them. Now, here's the funny part, because I actually, this is the, the weird thing that made me kind of scratch my head. In a vacuum, the M2 MacBook Pro is actually a really good computer. It is. It's a really good laptop. I reviewed the M1 MacBook Pro and really liked it, and a lot of people really like that machine, and in its time, ideal. That is still true about the M2 MacBook Pro, but because of the machines that exist on either side of it, there's almost no reason to get that one. Yeah, it's that's and, the thing. And you sort of asked this question two weeks ago to um, during the interview with that a couple Apple people about I Apple tried. Silicon, I and tried. their biggest thing was that the um, M1 13 inch MacBook Pro was the second uh, most sold laptop they had last year. Correct. True. Now the issue with that is last year is it was the first MacBook Pro with active cooling Apple Silicon out. Mm-hmm. Right. Like it was at that point the most powerful because it had active cooling over the M1 MacBook Air. Right. So there are a lot of people jumping. They're like, I want to try the most powerful M1 chip out there. It was pro at the time. Exactly. And then the M1 Pro and M1 Max comes out, which are better. Mm-hmm. Now you're kind of doing the next version step up of the lower chip, which is still quite a bit less powerful than the yeah. upgraded versions of the previous one. So now it doesn't really fit. We're at the point. Where it doesn't make sense. It's right kind now. of squeezed. So I, on Twitter, I called it the uh, MacBook Pro SE because 
the formula is it's the same exact hardware, so they don't need to do any retooling. The outside, the chassis, the screen, everything is exactly the same. Just put in a new blazing fast chip and ship it. Yeah. That's what they did. They didn't really plummet the price or anything, but that's the same formula, right? Um, I can't actually think of a real person, like an actual specific scenario mm-hmm. where someone should actually choose the M2 MacBook Pro. I actually went through in my head and tried to. We've all tried at work. Yeah. Because for most people, I'm going to suggest if you're looking for a Mac laptop, starting with the M2 MacBook Air. Let's just start there. For sure. And and change based on that. So let's say I suggest the M2 MacBook Air. You're like, all right, it's pretty nice. It's got the ports I need, nice screen. But you know what I need? I just need it to be a little bit more powerful. Like the M2 just doesn't really cut it and I'm doing some longer exporting, I'm doing some graphical renders, I'm doing some stuff where it would suggest that I need more CPU, more GPU, a little more power. In that case, I would immediately recommend that that person go straight to the M1 Pro, 14 inch MacBook Pro, Yeah, straight to that machine. There is a bigger price gap, but that's a better machine all around. And you're actually going to get way more CPU and GPU, way more performance. Mm -hmm. Um, There are some reviews now since the the reviews are out. There are some benchmarks of the M2 MacBook Pro. Uh, I think Monica Chin's review at The Verge did a really good job. She put all of the the benchmarks side by side so you can see. The delta between M2 and M2 with active cooling is this. Mm -hmm. And then the delta between M2 and the last gen M1 MacBook Pro is a little bigger. And then the delta between M2 and M1 Pro is big. It's big. It's, it's a big. very big difference. So the the amount of extra performance the three hundred dollars gets you is really significant. So if that's the one thing you want over the MacBook Pro is extra performance, go straight to the M1 Pro. Yeah, because even when you're looking at price wise, like the thirteen inch M2 MacBook Pro starts at twelve ninety nine, but that's for two hundred fifty six gigs of storage, which I would yes. never recommend to anybody, no matter what they are doing. Like five twelve should be absolute minimum. Yeah, you're a pro. You really <laughs> yeah. need the extra power. And you're going to bump up to this laptop, and now you're going to get less storage, a worse screen, less real buttons, less ports, mm-hmm. all for like a 10% boost in performance. Just get it. Th- and only really that <laughs> performance for like prolonged activity when you need the active yeah. cooling and it's yeah. like actually peaking. But so you're thinking, I'm going to say the minimum 13 inch M2 you should macbook pro you should get is very confusing we discussed this before earlier is like yeah. how you call these as well because like m2 pro is eventually going to be a chip so you can't even call it the m2 pro you yeah. have to always make sure you say macbook, MacBook pro. pro m2 macbook yeah. pro yeah so we're looking at the the 512 gig storage version at 1499 and then you can get a 14 inch m1 pro macbook pro for 19 or like around 2000 yep. pretty much that and that already has 512 gigs so like if you're the pro who needs that, you're probably okay spending the $500. It just yeah. seems the jump and upgrade design you're going to get to that is well, well, well worth the yeah. price. I even tried to go in the reverse direction where you're like, you're thinking about getting the 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And you're like, well, maybe I don't need that much power. Or maybe I don't need that much, that that many ports. So I just don't need that much Mm-hmm. Well, then you should immediately kick down to the MacBook Air. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because you don't need that much. You're going to get great performance out of an M2. Uh, you're still going to get a nice screen, the new design, MagSafe, fast charging, new colors, all this new stuff. And you won't have to get a worse computer with the, so, you know, it's it's just such it's such a squeeze. Yeah. I, the only thing I could think of, and I think Rene Ritchie said it in his video, and even for this person, I don't know if I would recommend it, but the one person I could think of was they were literally just about to add the old M1 MacBook Pro to their cart, and then the M2 MacBook Pro just came out, so they should get this one instead. Yeah, it's Even like, to that person, I would say just get the just get the MacBook Air. Just wait another couple of weeks. Yeah. But, I, yeah. I could see that. Or if you are a hardcore Touch Bar fan. There were people oh, when the last sad. redesign came out who were like, I missed the touch bar. If that is if that is your favorite part of the MacBook, okay. then there you go. Now you have a little bit upgraded version. If you had the M1 or, you know, it's going to be a really, really nice upgrade if you had the Intel version of it. Oh, for sure. So like, so okay. that's it. If you love the touch bar, this is the computer for you. Hardcore touch bar fans. This is probably, ideally, the last computer they make with a touch bar. 
So I'll say hard until they bring it bar. back. They brought back the SD card slot. Now bring back the touch bar. And yeah. assuming seven they don't years. do that, yeah, I'll say yeah. The uh, the person who literally just added the old one to their cart should get this, and the person who is a hardcore touch bar fan should get this. If they made a touch bar dongle, do you think people would buy it? Jesus, an external touch bar. Isn't that just a? I don't monitor? know what it is. <laughs> <The touch screen. laughs> I don't know. That's for the there's there's what you get for the the hardcore touch bar fans is you a USB C touch bar that sits on the side of your computer. A very very thin iPad <laughs> that connects to the side. Ah, that would be rough. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll keep an eye on it. I I definitely have plans to get my hands on these laptops when they're available. M2 MacBook Air should be soon. M2 MacBook Pro if we can just to see what the benchmark differences are. Yeah, but. and. And I'm always interested to hear from our audience if there's someone out there who saw this 13 inch M2. What am I missing? Yeah, like I would love to know what your use case is that you find this to be the compelling choice um, over an M1 Pro or the MacBook Air M2. I would love to know. I would really, really like to know. Tweet at us, comments, whatever. I would. Here's the other, the last thing I'll leave you with. A lot of um, the initial sentiment when we saw this new design was. Oh, okay, it's the old design for this MacBook Pro. Why didn't they just make a new design for this MacBook Pro, right? M2 MacBook Pro, refresh, update the design. Um, to which I say, yeah, that would have been nice. Good point. But um, then you just you just end up competing directly with the 14-inch MacBook Pro. Like there is no difference. It's other than M1 Pro versus M2. It's all very... It's very confusing to think about, which is why we're kind of stumped here, which is why we're throwing the question onto you at home. I've never been so confused by the existence of a product. I'm like stumped. I'm actually stumped. It feels like they have a bunch of extra chassis and want to get rid of them. That's that's why your SE comparison does very well. That's why they didn't redesign it is because they needed to use those chassis. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Okay. All right. Well, we got to take a quick break and then talk about the Nothing Phone, one of the most hyped devices in a long time. But... We are back to doing trivia yes. before the ad breaks. So, Adam, take it away. Don't say the answer this time. Okay, which of the following was not a version of OS X? Kodiak, Jaguar, or Cougar? Okay. Oh, I, got, I know what this one is. I, I know I'm one. confident, which means I'm scared I'm wrong. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Let's talk about let's talk about this nothing phone. Yeah, I think is, the first I've, thing we have to talk about is like the views we've been getting on that video, which is insane. It's crazy. So I I was like I we've been avoiding talking about the nothing phone because mm-hmm. there's like nothing to say. All oh, the puns here we go. But, but there's nothing to say. They're just this is Carl Pay playbook. Like reveal just a little bit at a time, a little bit extra, a little bit extra. Um, but I'm following it because it's a new startup trying to do something interesting in smartphones, mm-hmm. and that's what I'm into. So. Uh, eventually they come to me and they're like, hey, Marquez, would you like to do a world exclusive first reveal of this glyph interface with the lights we've put on the back of the nothing phone? You can be the first one to show it to the planet. Yeah. It's like, all right, cool. I get to see the phone. hard to say no to that. get to check it out. I'm not going to say no to that. That sounds great. Um, So they're like, all right, cool. Uh, We were going to ship it, but since we're running so tight on time, we're just going to fly someone over to you to just, hand you the phone and show you how it works and then you can make the video and do whatever you want that's not that uncommon also if anyone's out there hearing that like we've had companies yeah. fly people out d brand sometimes flies people out just to put the skins on things because they don't trust us yeah, so that's pretty funny yeah. like that's not that uncommon they're in also the industry. incredibly good at it they're insanely they're good at that literal robots anyway uh yeah so they, they you know they fly out here uh a day or two i get to spend with the the nothing phone and i again we're only really allowed to talk about and reveal the glyph interface on the back of the phone. There's still way more that we don't know about the phone. And you could definitely argue that this is just playing right into the hype and For like sure. sharing it. But I actually found it really cool. And the way I made the video and, and phrased things was like, okay, this is going to be unique. Is this enough to get people to care about a phone? And I found the conversation about that question really interesting. Yeah. But we can talk about, okay, this did get a lot more attention than I was actually expecting. It- <laughs> what was it? I think in the first two hours, it had doubled the view count it's of still... where the our WWDC video is, which is always a very, very popular video. I mean, this thing was... Yeah. I mean, okay, for jolting. context, we typically... 
yeah, we get, let's say one to 2 million views on a video in 24 hours. Um, the best videos are the ones of the most hot, like hype devices. Yeah. Uh, and this one is no longer doubling the Apple videos, but for many hours, it was literally doubling mm -hmm. the performance of the Apple videos. So people know about or care about, or are at least interested in the nothing phone to the extent that they'll watch this video. Yeah. So cool. First look at the phone. Um, so we got to see that and I'll just refresh. You can watch the video. It's only like a seven minute video, but the glyph interface on the back, it's got these lights, about 900 LEDs across the back of the phone. And when they all light up, it kind of looks like a, like a it movie looks, prop. It looks like, bit. um, if a, if aliens were making a crop circle of a weird sim ejector tool. Oh uh, yeah, actually. Kinda. Right. Uh, there's been some people saying it looks like the a vague silhouette of an Apple logo, which is hilarious. Because I can kind of see that also. They are like coming for Apple, but also kind of doing the Apple thing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the phone. Look at the like, phone. Wait, wait, wait. Can we talk on that real quick? Yeah. In your video, you said it looks like an iPhone 11 or an iPhone 12. Mm -hmm. When I first saw it, I thought iPhone 10 or 10s. And I think there's it's more. Accurate. I've seen two. But I've seen both of these flat sides though. Well, okay, okay. I, I guess when I'm talking about like just the back. So like when I think of the back, just the back. I first see the pill cut out because it has a light around it, and yep. that is 10, 10s. But then some people are seeing that the lenses are protruded and the pill's not a bump, so they see 11 and 12. Sure. So I, it at first I was like, no, it's clearly a 10. But now I see all these people saying 11, 12, and I see that also. So I, I think with the flat sides, if you look at the whole phone, it kind of looks uh, like a 12. I hate being wrong, but I think you're right. It's similar. I mean, but you get the idea is like, they're not shy about like doing lots of stuff. Apple's already yeah. done. The buttons look very similar. Um, speakers in the same place, but like the lights are different. The lights are different. Yeah. I don't really see that on too many other phones. And if we just ignore the question of like who cares about lights on the back of the phone, they do a bunch of cool stuff. They they will light up as a fill light while you're taking videos. That I think is the coolest. And they get pretty bright. So I was I was kind of impressed with that. They get pretty bright while also remaining like soft and like it's nice lighting. It's the opposite of when somebody's like in the dark and you turn the flash on and try and then yeah. that just looks like Blair Witch product where this or Blair Witch project where this looks you know, like key lighting. Like I've seen some bad lighting. ring lights on phones. Motorola yes. used to put a ring light around the camera lens, like that was going to make a difference versus yeah. a flash. This is genuinely bigger than that ring light. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 better. So for that type of stuff, close up subjects, maybe dark environments. It does have a real flash, it's, but it's, it's cool, cool for that. Yeah, it'll light up the ring on the back when you wireless charge or reverse wireless charge. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It has a mode where you can flip it over and it'll just use the lights for your for your notifications. Um, one thing I didn't get to demo, but that some people picked up in the software was the glyph interface, uh, will use that exclamation point at the bottom yeah. to, uh, respond while you're talking to Google assistant. So the phone's face down. Oh, it's like a Google level assistant. meter. Or yeah. Like a okay. level meter. Um, but it'll also act as a battery charging indicator, which that, I thought was nice. That I thought was cool. But at the same time, I hated that it goes away and that you have to like shake it. it I, should, like I think it should just stay on. Um, I can't imagine it's taking that much battery plus it's plugged in at that part. So what's not, the point of it not staying on? I wonder if you'll be able to toggle a setting to stay on, but I feel like it would get annoying if it's in the corner of the room just lit up all the time. If it's dark and you're sleeping, I could see that. But that if I'm too. like, if it's on my desk and it's charging, I would love to just like quickly be able to see that. If I'm shaking it, I could have just picked the phone up and looked at the charging. It is remarkably easy to just like poke it and it just lights up. So okay. it, it, it was very sensitive and I feel like the convenience of just going, eh, what's that at? And it's, you can see it's like halfway and you kind of know. Okay. So I'll Maybe. give it that credit. But that's that's a lot of stuff that it does. I just like notification lights on the back of phones and we haven't seen that many. I did like the recording um, that it blinks a little red light when you're recording as well. There is also a record that, that on the back. I think that's one of those things where I see it. I'm like, I think a lot of phones should have this because you should always know if somebody is recording Recording on you? That's yeah. fair. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't see a toggle to turn it off, so... Again, we don't know camera quality. We don't know a bunch of other stuff about the phone. But I don't know. Thoughts on like, will people care about lights on the back of a Here, phone? I, if I could take it one step broader, like I don't care about the lights that much. I think they're cool. I think they're unique. I'm all for people doing unique things and like trying something different. Cool. Yeah. I do like how it looks. And it kind of reminds, like, I mean, obviously it reminds me of the Nothing Year Ones which were a pair of headphones I used for quite a bit because honestly, I was fine with, I didn't think the features worked very well. I didn't think the sound quality was anything spectacular, but I thought they looked cool. I thought they were decently priced. And like, 
I was fine with that. They fit in my ears. So to me, it was like, it kind of felt like how people buy beats. I'm like, I appreciate this look and it's functional enough that I, that I like it. And like, it, it was affordable. It's way, those were 99. What like a lot of other things are like 160, yeah. 200, 250. So that yeah. felt really cool to me. And this feels like that. I think it will, I think there are people because of how successful beats were that pay attention to how things look. And That's fair. this phone looks really cool with the clear back and the like kind of transparency. We've seen phones do transparent before, but this is like clearly super focused on it and that's their whole shtick and it looks really nice. Yeah, I think I've noticed a couple things about it since publishing the video, What especially stuff I see in the comments. One is that it seems like a bunch of uh, regular people who aren't super into tech are at least intrigued by that phone, mm -hmm. whether or not they're actually thinking of buying it. They're just like, oh, that's cool. The phone has lights on the back and they do cool stuff. And like, you can see how much charge battery has. Yeah. Like, that's kind of cool. Two is this phone is not targeted for the US. Yes. They're actually, I guess, mainly targeting Europe and the regions that they're, I mean, it's a startup, but you don't really have the carrier relationships yet to just jump right into the US. So uh, it will have very limited compatibility on US carriers. Yeah. But this is more of a phone for Europe and Asia. Um, and three, uh, everyone puts a case on their phone. <laughs> we know this to yeah. be a fact. How do you navigate that? Do you just sell a clear case or do you have like a case that like just cuts out the lights on the back or something, I guess? I, I mean, I think there will be a few like that. I would be very, very surprised if this didn't, come with like a clear case in the box because like in the box think think about every other phone we've seen that really cares about the back of it so basically a lot of like oppo realme xiaomi phones that have a very unique colored back that usually comes case. with a clear case that's true any of these like true. naruto phones or the dragon ball phones those always seem to have a clear case in them so i think any phone and even some super budget ones we've seen still come with a clear case when they care about the back and this is like the phone to care about the back on. Yeah, probably more than ever. I, I would bet it comes with a clear case. I like your idea of ones that just have the lights cut out. Just cut out, yeah, just the lights. Like what a kind custom. Of, what was the HTC phone that had the dot matrix on the front so you could tell the oh, time? Oh, yes. It, that was actually a screen cover. That was an amazing feature. Back That's in really the time, cool. th that was on the same level of like, is it a gimmick? Is it a feature? I don't know, but it's kind of cool. But it was like the one M8. I mean, did you see how case. excited you just got when I mentioned that? I, I really liked it. I didn't even really use it. Mm -hmm. I used that phone because it was a it was a one of those cases that like had a flap yeah, on the yeah, front. Yeah. I hate having a flap They're on the front terrible. of my phone. But that feature was sick. It I was like really that. cool. Yeah, it's kind of in that same league. So I don't know if I'm ready to declare it a gimmick yet or or just a cool feature for some people. I think it's easy to call it a gimmick, but there are gimmicks out there that are genuinely fun and Facts. genuinely like enjoyable to use. Facts. That's so. very fair. So okay, here's my here's what I ended the video with. This is actually really funny. So the video comes out, it starts just getting a ton of attention and press because nobody's seen the phone yet. Carl Pay retweets the video and then I think two minutes later he finished watching the video, which is <laughs> when I got to the end where I started to make my comparison to OnePlus. Yeah. Um, so he, he tweeted about that, but my comparison was, okay, listen, so lots of phones all look the same. How do you steal market share from these Goliaths selling these bland phones? You do something a little different, something a little cooler, just to target some group that's going to like it. And that group will buy your phone. So you just, you just made an enthusiast phone for some group. Yeah. You stole the market share just from those small group of people, right? Now, as you grow, you can start to attract more people and maybe the next version of your phone is a little bit more broad appeal so you can attract more people because you got that first audience that liked the phone. For sure. Now they're going to buy the next one and you sort of draw more and more. The next version is even more broad appeal. You attract more. The next version is even more broad appeal until you got to this point where you've started making bland phones yourself that sort of feel like they've abandoned the roots of being targeted to an enthusiast. Yeah. Sound familiar? It does. Yeah. I think every, also, I want to add on there, I think a lot of people forget that Pocophone went that way as well. You're talking about OnePlus. I'm talking about OnePlus. But Pocophone, like, to me, that's what it feels like too. Pocophone had this, like, insanely hyped original phone that came out. You couldn't mention a smartphone for, like, six months without somebody comparing it to the Pocophone. Crazy, crazy amount of people who were obsessed with this thing yeah. Then they just kind of go away and then they come back and release not the second version of that, but like 
10 other ones and now i, I just feel like did. poco's just making a billion phones and I yeah know what they're yeah that's a little different because they just diluted super hard like there was yeah, one they did poco it was super phone. fast yeah there was one poco phone and it was like this is the the goat legend like if you if you don't have any budget phone comparison to this phone like this is the one and then within two years, it was like, now there's nine Poco phones. And we and don't know Poco which phone, one Which one is from which, the other, which yeah. one is the one you buy. It's just, it's they've saturated their own market. Exactly. Um, so that's that's another version of what could happen they here. Just jump, they just jump from step one to step 10, basically, in like yeah. a single year. Whereas OnePlus was, yeah, they were gradually. But, but it's also, when you think about, though, as there's this weird standpoint from the fans as well, because when you're an enthusiast of a phone like that, all you want to do is convince other people that this thing you're enthusiastic about is right. Mm -hmm. And the more people you then convince that come over, then that group gets bigger. And then that product needs to adhere to a bigger group of people. And then they bring in more people and has to adhere to more people. And exactly. It's kind of, you're cannibalizing yourself. You're you, the companies and the fans are both basically just turning. It's like the sun exploding. The sun just gets bigger and bigger and then explodes. And now off to find the next one. And it's the it's next so sun, funny. I'm yeah. Sure like rooting for the success of a enthusiast company is also rooting it towards its own dilution and eventual, but it also yeah. needs to succeed to survive. So it's kind right. of a, uh, so maybe, maybe there's a Carl pay for like every wave and we just get like a wave of like, so we have one plus, right? <laughs> one plus has like four or five glory years before they fade into like being generic. And then as they start to fade, another company comes along with another Carl pay and that's nothing, and they start to make cool phones. So you jump from the last of the good OnePlus phones. I think to it's the, the same nothing. Carl Pay, actually. It's actually the same <laughs> yeah. Carl Pay. But then, you know, five or six years later, they're going to start to want to jump out of the nothing bandwagon because they've gotten too generic onto the next one, and we just keep having this arc over and over again. But here's the difference, though. This is not differentiating itself with nerdy specs, price for the dollar performance. This is differenti differentiating purely on aesthetics at this point at this point and, and like aesthetics aesthetics are the easy way to do this right now right or not easy way it's the easiest way because something so that looks good is always way more attractive than just some numbers on a sheet at first like we we know there's a lot of people out there who are obsessed with specs but i i think more and more people like that since those poco phone days days are starting to understand that like how a phone works and how it feels and how the user experiences is way more important. So back then it was like, hey, you want top of the line specs. We're OnePlus, we have those specs at a cheaper number. Now it's like, you want this incredible user interface and just like overall user experience. And it's hard to show that without showing software. So they're like, look at this. I'm sh already showing you some experience mm -hmm. in the design aspect of this phone. Yeah. So it feels almost like a different route, but also very similar route. I think because they're differentiating with a different thing, which is design feature, uh -huh. I think they have a chance at attracting a different starting audience. So I think there That's are people right now who are who are following Carl Pay, following what might be another one plus, who will probably be disappointed when the design is the differentiating factor instead of what the old stuff we were expecting was. It's funny because if I can interrupt for a second. Yeah. The way you're saying that, I saw it as a positive of that old OnePlus enthusiastic crowd believes in Carl Pei. So Carl Pei has them already. Mm -hmm. Now he needs to bring in the other side with the design aspect. So this is now a culmination Can you keep them of both? two sides. Can you keep Can them both? You keep That's going to be the question we're going to find out very soon because yeah. we know so little. But I think right now, Carl Pei has in his hands and, and like eyes on him, the old OnePlus fans, and now he's bringing in the new aesthetic. I'm going to call them the smartphone beats. The hype, the the, hype like beast. The hype beast. It's on StockX yeah. right it's, now. it's literally on StockX. I yeah. think the top bit is like, over $3,000, yeah, which is the nuts. hype beast. Um, okay, but yeah, yeah, so so I think right now that's where it is. And then once we find out everything about the phone, what you said, we're going to see yeah. who that's targeted the at. The thinning of the crowd. We'll see. Hopefully both. We'll yeah, see I'm if sure Carl's hope hoping. Yeah, it would be a success if you can appeal to both groups. But yeah, that's always been a such an interesting thing when you look at like the iPhones or the Samsungs of the world. It's like, this is a huge company, but 
they're also selling this phone to so many millions of people that it cannot have, it by definition cannot have features that are designed for small groups of people. So you can't be an enthusiast phone at that scale. So it, it's you can it, you can easily differentiate from the Samsungs and iPhones of the world, but can you keep them? And the problem is, is every single one of those companies that caters to them at first wants to be the other company eventually. Yeah. No matter how much you believe that they're there for the little guy, mm -hmm. that company wants to be the shark. Yeah, they want to eat the other fish. Oh, are we talking about the what is it again? The the, the menorah, Mor remora, remora. I thought. Yeah, the remora. Well, I guess that's I think not that's really more feeding. That. Out. It's yeah, more. Yeah. It's no, more like dependency. This one wants to be the shark that has the remora. It want to be fish. a whole another yeah, shark. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on the Nothing Phone. We'll also keep an eye on the hype levels, like I said, this yeah. video. The, the hype levels right now are just rising astronomically, and I think they're going to continue to rise, continue to rise, and we will see when money is put on the table if it stays there. Right. I think that will be a very big... I mean, obviously, that'll be a really big yeah. tell of so how this company goes. So by July 12th. That's July when July 12th out. is launch and you can order then? That's when you'll, I believe you'll be able to order, but that's at least when it's coming All right. Out. We'll check back in a couple weeks. Yeah. We'll stay tuned for that. All right. We're going to take another quick break, but before we do, trivia time. Trivia. So Andrew mentioned earlier the sun exploding, which is perfect because on this day in history, June 22nd in 1633, the famous astronomer Galileo Galilei was forced to recant his views that the Earth orbited the Sun. Sticking with our solar system, which two planets have no moons? You get two points per correct answer. I feel like there was a lot of buildup to that question to just ask about a planet that, was a that lot has of no facts. moons. That was a lot of facts. Yeah, I just threw a lot at I you. Liked it. I liked it. I someone it. learned something today. Yeah. I hope. I did. Um, I have to oh think yeah, about sorry, that one I definitely have to think about that one. All right, we'll think on it. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Uh, there would be no better way to finish talking about some stuff on Waveform than without bringing some cars back into the mix. Yeah, the comments asked for more EV stuff. So, like, like we've been saying, you know, we can talk about it all day. Uh, no, there's some interesting ones. Okay, you 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 dropped this in the Slack yesterday, and I was I had the I had I quite think a negative David reaction. Posted it. Yeah, it was. It's the light year. Um, some new. I mean, the like just bring just out read the, bring I'll out the checklist. It. Yeah, I'm gonna read this tweet first. From it's from Wired. Okay. So I'll just read the tweet. This is the Lightyear Zero, the car that could become the first produced car with solar panels this fall. The Dutch company says it'll be capable of driving around 388 miles without recharging with additional range of up to 44 miles a day from the solar panels. And then some sleek renders that honestly look like dolly renders of uh, a mysterious concept car. <laughs> so, yeah. So we've talked at length, both on the podcast and on the main channel, uh, about startup EVs. Yeah. So I'm not even going to get into the when does this ship conversation. This, this checks almost all those boxes. Yeah, yeah. very much so. But uh, the solar panel conversation has been interesting. I, this has come up before, and I don't I don't know if I asked Elon about this or somebody has asked Elon, but just like, hey, what do you think about putting, like, Solar panels on, I think this is a cyber truck. Somebody asked about it. Like, what about the, the yeah. tunnel cover? Just mm -hmm. making it. And the answer really is like, solar panels aren't that efficient yet. And so with the best solar panel tech that we have today, covering the entire top of the car in solar panels would max you out at like 40 miles of range if you had a sunny day all day and you left it outside the yeah, entire time. I'm imagining it in like uh, Alaska during the summer solstice where they like all don't day. have night. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> that is a best case scenario, which means you're probably going to have some cloudy days where you, you, you'll have some sunny days where you get lots of range and then you'll have some rainy days where you literally get three miles added to the battery. So this isn't like you're going to just get free energy forever. It's cool it's cool to add this range and it might be convenient for a short commute, but it's, it's to me, I don't want to say gimmick because it's a really useful feature to connect it to the drivetrain like that, but it is very unlikely to make a difference there, to me. There are clearly some like obstacles to overcome in this scenario. I mean, like, so we're talking about 40 miles on a day, which is like best case scenario, right? So like absolute max. So let's just 
you know, when you think of anything, when they give a number like that, you have to go lower. So let's say- In the electric car world, if a car says they get 300 miles of range, they get 270 miles of range. Let's say this is, I'll even be like optimistic and say 35 miles. Sure. Okay. So it, driving a day, you know, maybe there are some people that aren't driving that far in a day. They have a super short commute. There's someone who generally like leases a car. Cool. You might get like totally clean. If, if you park outside, if it's sunny all the time, if you clean your car enough to not affect the solar panels, that's something I always worry about. Do you remember years ago, there was like a Kickstarter for these like solar panel roads Oh. And everyone was freaking out about it. And then everybody immediately was just like, do you know how dirty those would get? And just like not it's work just at a all. Brutal logistics question. So yeah. like that's an issue as well. It just like it comes down to this point of how much extra is the cost going to be onto this? Because like solar panels aren't cheap. You're replacing like pretty easy stamped material. Yeah, it could just be metal to or do glass. This. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> You are taking away, like some people do like moon roofs and stuff. You're taking that away. There's no option for that in this car. It's not adding that much. And you're getting a bunch of extra parts now that could break or something could happen to this. Like a hailstorm on this sounds expensive. That's fair. Like tens of thousands of dollars expensive. So it's interesting. So I, I plan on talking about this pretty soon in a video, but in this tech smart home that I've been building, mm -hmm. uh, solar panels on a roof. Yeah. It can get hailed on, it can get rained on, it can have birds land on it. It's it's a strong roof and it has solar. Um, it is expensive compared to normal materials. And obviously if you do this in a car, you don't have a moon roof anymore. Um, but the I think to me more of what I was thinking was, do you think you're gonna replace charging? Because you, you can't. Like, okay, no. you drive to work. Let's say you drive to work. You start with a full battery. You drive to work, it was 30 miles. Great. Now, as it sits at work all day in the sun, you replenish that battery. Then you drive home using that same battery. Mm -hmm. Then what? It sits at night all night. Yeah. So you can't fully drive off solar. Like that would be the dream. That would be cool. But that's not how solar panels, that's not, we haven't gotten them that good yet. Yeah. And, and like, so I also, can you click on the website and see this? Because I don't think you've seen the full car and they I have show not. it. This and is the there's first a, time. I, wanna, I want you to see it because it is a little more than you're expecting. This is the first time. It opens up by saying drive for months without charging. Press X okay, to doubt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Scrolling down. Uh, interesting. So it's yeah. the super teardrop shape. It looks kind of like that Mercedes EQX you, or whatever. It reminds me of a mix of that. So it has like the really long like hatchback trunk. So it can just make so the like the roof of it seamlessly flows all the way down to the trunk and it's all solar panel. And then even the hood of the car is a solar, solar? panel. So they're really leaning into this. Um, but do you know what it also reminds me of? Do you remember when I believe it was the Civic or there was a Honda hybrid that used to have the wheel cover on the back like this? Wheel cover on the back? For aero. Oh, oh the yeah, like the yeah, solid yeah. wheel cover over the back. So I mean well, hmm. it's a pretty it's a sedan with a really long, elongated roof into the trunk, Wait. basically creating as much space as possible for a solar panel. Have you seen the McLaren Speedtail? Mm. Google McLaren Speedtail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like th this is the type of thing where you're like, all right, I need to make this car as aerodynamic and slippery as possible for the longest possible range. You need aero caps. You need a sleek shape. <laughs> you need it to slip through the air. And I don't care about how bad it looks. Yeah, and you just end up with this shape. Yeah. So okay. fine. So it's going to be focused on that. It's going to be hopefully super efficient. They're advertising lots of range. 388 miles of range. I mean, that in itself is cool without yeah. it. Um, and I do want to say like, I like the idea and I hope we can get to the part where solar panels will make a difference because we all know that even though we're using electric vehicles, it doesn't always mean we're using clean energy to charge those vehicles. Mm -hmm. I, it's clearly the step we need to make, but right now there's still a lot of like, just because it's an EV doesn't mean it's fully green. I think right now the better solution is if you really want that clean energy to be charging your car is to have solar panels on your house. Right. And then you're just charging your EV from that. Yeah. This is where this is the part where I haven't done, I'm just gonna look into the camera and say, I don't know this to be true. <laughs> I don't have the research. We are in front not of experts. I'm no. not an expert. But from what I understand, the surface area of a car, no matter how efficient, like we only get so much energy from the sun, and it's a lot of energy, but you know, you compare the amount of efficiency of current solar panels, let's say it's 0. 0.6, mm -hmm. 
and we assume an improvement all the way to perfect efficiency where we can use all the range, even if you do get perfect efficiency, you don't have enough surface area to charge and drive a car for very long. So it's it's it'll always basically be relegated to like a cool accessory feature. I think Ellis put in the in the doc here there was a, a Prius back in the day. Well, yeah. So the Wired tweet said that this might be the first production car with solar panels on it, but Not I true. immediately remembered the Karma Rivero that we looked that at a while panels. ago had a solar panel on it, and that was getting even less range added onto the battery. Ellis found was that yeah, adding a range Prius. To the battery too? I believe that one was adding range to the battery, but the okay. Karma Rivero is also a weird cis, like hybrid system. It might not have even EV. been in production. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but Ellis showed, and this is really cool, I thought, a Prius with a solar panel, but it wasn't connected to the drivetrain. Rather, you could leave your AC running with the car off and not waste gas. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Car I think battery, that's a really car cool battery idea. never dies. Yeah. It's a good hack. That's a really cool idea. I like that feature. Um, so, yeah. Solar panels, cool. You know, maybe these guys are thinking of something different, maybe, but their website doesn't have a lot of information. So I can't say they've yeah. discovered something new with this that could finally bring it. But all I'm saying is there's an order button. All I'm saying <laughs> is uh, we made a video about how if you have a cool idea for an EV that you just make a dope website and great renders and parade one concept car around and collect lots of money. And that's basically what we're seeing here. Uh, 250 euro, you know, order fee, whatever. I, I root for the success of startup EV companies, but I hesitate to like just cheer on every single thing under the moon. Cause uh, yeah, my initial reaction was this should be an option, not the defining feature well, of the that, car. Well, that's the other thing is like when we talked about price before, this is going to add a lot onto the price and that's going to take people away who aren't looking at super, super high priced vehicles. But the minute you want to offer both of them then on top, you make your production so d twice as hard because you now have to offer two different trims where one has a regular roof and one has a solar roof and this hood at this point. I guess my question is, would you buy this car if it didn't have the solar feature? I'm right now, no, because I don't know anything yeah, about it. There isn't really, In the future, I don't love the look of it yeah. either. But there's like, not a there's, lot of other I, redeeming things about yeah. it. So I'm like, this isn't an option. This is the reason you buy the car. This one. Yeah. I, I do want to like, in a broader spectrum, I'm wondering if there is a way solar panels can eventually get put onto an EV. I would assume it would be a pickup truck first because maybe you could have a truck bed cover that could have it that I increases uh, surface area a little bit. And like the majority of people using trucks aren't always using the back of the truck. So if you could have a cover and some extra yeah. panels back there, maybe you could add something extra. Somebody in the comments on YouTube, do the napkin math. I bet there's somebody watching this who's like a solar engineer who knows about the efficiency of solar panels. Assume the biggest truck with the most surface area with perfect efficiency of solar panels. How many miles are we looking at in the best case scenario added to a to a car's range? To me, it'll never actually make a difference, but I hope I'm maybe wrong. I feel like the the technology we're looking for is advancement in solar panels before we get to the advancement in cars with solar panels. Yeah, you and need, that, that will come eventually. You need amazing drivetrains and battery tech before the solar panel saves the EV. So I think so, yeah. We'll see. But yeah, it's interesting to see. I, I still I root for new EV ideas all the time, so this is cool that we're actually getting stuff like that. The Karma, by the way, is one of the funniest looking cars we've ever yeah, pointed uh, a camera but at. But when I was looking it up for this, they're making a 2022 model. And it yeah, looks nicer, it. no mustache. It's funny, the mustache was like the most unique identifying thing about the car. You know how the BMWs have the nostrils now? And you see yeah. the nostrils and you're like, BMW, I know what that is. The, the mustache was like, I could see that from a mile away and know, oh my God, there's a Karma. Yeah. And now it's got like this swooping thing. It's a little different. I don't mind it though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Do you want to do trivia answers to trivia. wrap up? Okay, yeah, we had some interesting trivia ones this week, so we should jump in and do those. Uh, remind us the first question. All right, but first, the score so far. Marquez has nine, Andrew has five. So the first question, which of the following was not a version of OS X? Kodiak, Jaguar, or Cougar? Uh, my my guess on this is Kodiak because Kodiak is a bear and the other two are big cats and yeah. they named things after cats. They did cats and then they switched 
uh, after OS 10, they did Mac OS and they just did uh, California locations, basically. Okay. So Kodiak never made it. I'm gone with Kodiak. The correct answer is Cougar. Kodiak was a beta. Kodiak was a beta. Uh, oh, Ellis the, pulled the fast one on you guys. Well, <laughs> Cougar. <laughs> there Mac was OS. never an OSX Cougar. There was never a Cougar, really. Nope. <laughs> I feel like Cougar is the, the like like every high school mascot ever. It's yeah. Cougar, Counterpoint. <laughs> is there Mac OS Mountain Lion? Yes. 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 That is all. That is a type. Of, that is a Cougar. <laughs> That's true. Check But it is not OSX <laughs> Cougar. <laughs> Cougar? The I like The Mountain that. Lion, like that. also known as the Cougar. <laughs> ah. Thought you pulled the fast one, but okay. we pulled a faster you one. Faster you definitely one pulled the fast one on okay, us. That no. was good. We'll Wait, so the, the Mac OS beta was Kodiak? That's interesting because mm-hmm. huh. Kodiak's a bear, yeah, correct? It's a bear. Yeah. So why they would beta. go bear and then cat. Maybe B for beta for bear. Ellis and I need to <laughs> yeah, discuss whether what? we're giving you guys points. You shouldn't give us points. Were there other beta names? I don't I even no know idea. if there were other I also didn't know they ever named the beta something different from the the main OS. I thought it was just like Mac OS. I thought it was just like code names, yeah, OS like 10. pre, like alpha, and then like I yeah. Don't know. You should not give us points, by the way. Yeah, I don't think you no, no, no we got it wrong. We got it wrong. We got okay. it wrong. Kodiak, right. yeah, that's a good one. We For the it fans never that were wondering, we were going to give them the points, but never mind. Nah, we appreciate it. Okay. I mean, it doesn't change anything either because yeah. we <laughs> no both points. said the same thing. Yeah. No points. Uh, the following question. Oh, okay, this one. Yada yada yada. Which two planets have no moons? <laughs> no moons. Man. No moons. Imagine no. if someone couldn't name all the and planets. And Pluto, we're saying, is not a planet. For sure. The purpose yeah. Of two, this. Whatever. Because Pluto does have a little satellite. A little, moon, so little one. Interesting. Pluto okay. does not count, and you get two <clears throat> points per correct answer for this one. Okay. Because there's two planets. There. Are, right. Earth has a moon. I know it that does. to be true. Jupiter. I'm just going through the logic in my head. Jupiter's you should probably moons. let me answer first because I can tell you I'll I'm you, far Andrew. less confident. I'll let you step through I, your logic. To be fair, I knew Earth had a moon. Thank okay. you very Solid. much. Good job. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure Jupiter, Jupiter and Saturn both have a lot of moons. I think Saturn has like 65 moons or something. I feel like I'm just asking you the question and then if you say yes or no. Oh, sorry. I, <laughs> go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Um, I will go... You remember all the names, right? No. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, I think I do. Um, I'm going to guess one in close and one far away. So I'm going to guess Neptune, a planet I definitely know very well, and Venus? I think the gas giants all have moons, so I'm going to go Mercury, Venus. That's my. So the correct answers are Mercury and Venus. Nice. So Marquez got plus four, and Andrew Woof. got plus two. Yeah, I couldn't ne- remember. Neptune always lets me down. <laughs> Neptune always lets you down. It, it, yeah, I think Saturn. Saturn, correct me if I'm wrong. Google, 67 moons? Is that Saturn or Jupiter? You get minus three points if this is wrong. <laughs> One of the two. What did 70, you say? 72. You said 72. Andrew, any guesses? Jupiter or Saturn? One of the two. Tons of moons. 56. Saturn has 82 moons. That's, oh, they must have discovered That's your number. More. How do you not remember that? They definitely discovered <laughs> more since I learned that fact. Do you guys want to guess Jupiter? This is Jupiter, six, uh, less than Saturn. Because Saturn has the rings, so like there's mad satellites. I'm going to guess less. So you said 82 for Saturn? Let me go 67 for Jupiter then. Andrew? 65. Jupiter has 82 moons. They both have 82 moons? No, 79 moons. <laughs> 79 Sorry. moons, okay. That's sick. I definitely learned that fact years ago when they hadn't found all of the moons. I'm someone someone sure. fact-checked that. It's been updated. Crew yeah. Mark has wrong. Yeah, well, you can, you can probably go on the Wikipedia and find when each one was discovered. Okay. Which I guarantee some will be during my lifetime, but we won't go. We won't dig that deep. We'll, just, we'll let you guys go off of that one. In uh, 2016, Business Insider reported that Jupiter had 67 moons and Saturn had what 62. Is business Insider? I don't know why they're reporting that. I want to see Astrology <laughs> Insider or Astronomy Insider. Just kidding. Uh, Either way. All right, let's get out of here before I embarrass enough. myself. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, obviously, stay tuned for the, the future videos on the channel. We've got stuff on the Nothing Phone. We've got stuff on cars coming up. Maybe by the time you see this, another car video. I'll just leave it at that. Thanks for listening. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Roven. We are partnered with Vox Media and our intro outro music was created by Vane. S-
to. Who just dropped an incredible track, by the way. Did, I haven't listened to it yet. Listen to it. It's okay. I'm sure it's great. Mm-hmm.